So you're looking to buy a 2010 through 2019 Ford Taurus SHO. And before you spend your hard earned money on this car, you're asking yourself, is this a good car? Well, I will answer that question in this video. So to answer today's big question, is the 2010 through 2019 Taurus SHO a good car? And the simple answer to that is yes, it is a great car, it's a phenomenal car. However, it does have its drawbacks. And I will briefly go over the pros and some cons of this car. And then at the end of this video, I'll have a final conclusion on the answer to the question. So pro number one. I think the first pro of this car is the fact that it's still a very practical car. Even though it's a high performance sedan, it's got a lot of practicality to it because of its size. This generation Taurus in general, no matter what trim you get, is a good car. However, the SHO trim is the tippy top, the pinnacle, the cherry on top of it all trim level to the Taurus and I think it really makes an exceptional vehicle because you got the practicality of the normal just the Taurus body style of this generation which has a massive trunk roomy interior plenty of space for people in the back and it's still even though it's a large car it's still very manageable in size you don't have to worry about parking this in uh, you know in smaller areas and stuff like you would maybe a big pickup truck right it isn't that big it's still a very manageable car, easy to drive, yet it's spacious enough and big enough to offer the comfortability and practicality that you really desire in a large sedan. So that is pro number one. So what is pro number two? Well, I think the cool thing about this car, and it really gives it an edge when you're shopping for a performance sedan in the used market, is the fact that this has a lot of awesome features bundled into the SHO trim. Now you think because the SHO is the top trim level that it would automatically have every feature you would ever want in Taurus. Well unfortunately that is not true. Not all Taurus SHOs are equipped equally. So there are still base model Taurus SHOs that don't have some of the cool bells and whistles that you can get on more fully loaded models. So these cars really came with a lot of cool features, especially as they progressed in their production. You could get these cars fully loaded with a moonroof and adaptive cruise control, front collision warning, blind spot monitoring, heated and cooled seats, front and back. You could get all kinds of cool things. These cars even had performance packs options on them that you could get uh, trans coolers and oil coolers and upgraded suspension components and shorter gear ratios to help with acceleration. These cars really had a lot of options that you could get them with, but they didn't all come that way. A lot of the cars came with more basic, basic options. My personal car is more of a base model. So with that said, I do think one of the big pros of this car is the fact that you can get them equipped to the moon with features or you can get a more basic model and save yourself a lot of money and at that point you are really getting a bargain which brings me up to pro number three the fact that this is a true bargain performance car this is really one of the best cars you could probably get under twenty thousand dollars if you want a modern performance car don't worry about a Mustang. Don't worry about a Challenger or Camaro. This car is a major value in the used market. You can pick up a 2013 and up model, even, you know, I've even seen 2015s now and newer with under 100,000 miles for under $20,000. And so I think that brings me to the last pro of this car is the actual performance of this car itself. This car is an incredibly good performing car. Not only does this car handle really well, but its straight line performance is nuts. This particular car here, my personal car, has got about the basic bolt-ons you can put on an SHO. This has nowhere near the list that some other owners put on their cars. Yet this car is still able to outperform a new Toyota Supra. It's, supposed, it's able to keep up with the performance of SRT Mopar products and keep up with newer Mustang GTs. How is that possible? It is easily possible because this EcoBoost engine produces a lot of torque. 
and when you combine that torque with an all-wheel drive system this thing can accelerate like crazy you can launch these cars relatively hard and I, I've personally achieved a 0 to 60 time of 3.8 seconds on this car which is nuts it is absolutely crazy to think that a Ford Taurus can go 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds you would have said that to me 15 years ago and I would have said you're nuts I always said you're absolutely crazy it was never gonna happen but it did and this is why the Ford Taurus SHO is such a notorious car because it has a level of performance once modified that rivals cars it should never be able to and it's always lived up to that reputation it makes it such a cool car okay so now that we've talked about the pros of this car it can't be perfect right well of course not unfortunately not everything in life is perfect and the Ford Taurus SHO is no exception to that Unfortunately, this car is plagued with a lot of reliability issues. And because of that, it does only kind of earn one con, honestly. And the way I kind of put the con together is the fact that it's just a high cost of ownership of this car. And that's basically because it does have a lot of reliability issues that can pose a lot of repair bills if you are not qualified to do the work yourself. Now a lot of work can be done by your normal home mechanic, however there are some things that it's probably best to leave up to a professional with the proper tools. So needless to say, no matter what, you're probably in the ownership of your Taurus will be paying a mechanic for some type of repair. Now along with that, fluid changes actually end up being kind of expensive on these cars too. And the main reason is, over time, SHO owners determined that it's more beneficial for these cars to have their fluids changed at very frequent intervals. And by frequent, I mean certain fluids change every 10,000 miles. And when you do that, it keeps a lot of the problematic parts from, ca from having catastrophic failure. But because you are constantly changing fluids and using a more expensive premium fully synthetic fluids, it does have a higher cost of ownership compared to a more traditional car even over the regular Taurus. So it's definitely got a much higher cost of ownership. Now what else makes this car more expensive to own? Well, it's not necessarily a Prius. You have a twin turbo V6 that's capable of 500 horsepower. So with that kind of power and going through an all wheel drive system, pushing 20 inch wheels down the road in a car that weighs two tons, you are going to have a little bit of problems with fuel economy. Now, I have personally gotten the best fuel economy average of 24 on a, on a highway mixed driving trip that was mostly highway in this car. That is the best I've ever got. In normal conditions, I usually average between 18 and 20 MPG on a 93 performance tune. Now, if I'm using my ethanol tune, then my mileage goes down even more and I'm averaging at least 15 to 18 MPG. So what's the final conclusion on the 2010 through 2019 Taurus SHO? Now, if I were to give my advice, especially after owning this vehicle for a year, to someone who is in the market for one, this would be my advice. I would suggest this car if you can find a 2013 and up model, mainly because they weren't as problematic as the first few years, which is the 10 through 12. Definitely try to find one around 50,000 miles and get the powertrain warranty. Please, for the love of all things that are good in life, get the powertrain warranty. I cannot stress that enough. You will be using it, trust me. Get it. Get the powertrain warranty when you buy this car, which is why I would definitely urge to go to a dealership when looking for one of these. And you can definitely get them for under 20,000. Get a warranty and you'll be fine. Now, I would only recommend this car to people who are mechanically inclined or at least know the basics of how to do your routine maintenance stuff because you will be doing that a lot and if you are paying someone else to do it, you're going to be paying them quite often. That or you're going to be using your warranty a lot. So I really hope this video was helpful, especially if you're out there trying to buy one of these cars. And if you like the video, please, you know what to do by now. I'm really trying to grow this channel, so you know what to do. Thanks for watching. I'm definitely going to be making a lot more videos here coming soon, so stay tuned.